This is the Carter's Hill stretch of the River Loddon near Reading and Berkshire, which sits above the Sindlesham Mill stretch of the river, just the other side of the M4 motorway. The venue is a slow-moving river set amongst open countryside and offers superb, unpressured fishing throughout the season for many species which respond well to a variety of baits and tactics. The length of available fishing covers around 1.3 miles of bank, starting at Peg 36 next to the motorway, up to Peg 1 at the other end of the fishery. As for the Sindlesham Mill stretch, most of the depths you'll find are between 4 and 6 feet, with deeper areas down to around 12 feet in places with some shallower spots. It's a mainly gravelly bottom with silty areas. Renowned as a specimen fishery, the Carters Hill stretch has produced barbel to a colossal 19 pound plus, with the average size of the fish being around the double figure mark. Chub averaged four to six pound, with fish of eight pound plus having been caught in the past, and which provide good sport even in the colder months. Alongside this, the venue contains specimen sized bream to double figures, perch to four pound plus, pike to 25 pound plus, mirror and common carp, as well as a smattering of tench, roach and dace, alongside the smaller species such as gudgeon and bullheads. The early part of the season produces extremely well on this section, but as with the Sindlesham Mill stretch, it contains abundant weed growth in warmer months, so strong tackle is advised to ensure the safe playing and landing of hooked fish. This weed growth makes extraction of fish difficult, and so as with all farm angling society fisheries, responsible angling is advised. The fishery produces well through the autumn and colder months with the added bonus that much of the weed growth disappears and so features more angling opportunities along this section. As with the Sindlesham Mill stretch of the river, the fishery responds well to a variety of methods and tactics. Many adopt the bait and weight approach while others prefer a more mobile, roving approach or a combination of the two. Preparation of swims by introduction of bait prior to fishing can also pay great dividends. Access to the fishery is via Jules Lane, where members may park their vehicles in the lay-by near the cottages and crossroads, but please be sure to keep noise for an absolute minimum. It's a fairly long walk to the river, so it's advised to travel light. Members can proceed across the field to the stile in the top left-hand corner, Cross Barkham Brook and head slightly right, proceeding across another field towards the M4. Incidentally, this area can contain a good amount of flood water at times, so care must be taken, especially during the colder months. Having proceeded across this field and across another stile, you'll arrive at Peg 36, which is next to the motorway. Making your way upstream, you'll encounter several swims with structured boats on the left and right, which slow the current close in, therefore making a bait drop close in, one of the favourite choices for those that regularly fish the river. You'll find one of the deeper spots along this section of the bank, down to around 12 feet. Coming on upstream, you'll encounter several more swims which offer several distinct areas both close in and out in the flow for those wishing to fish two rods. Experience on the river will dictate where the best spots are at any given time of the year. You'll notice that some of these swims are quite shallow close in due to silty deposits so a telescopic landing net pole is sometimes required to safely land fish. Early morning and evening sessions on this fishery can produce really well, but are not necessary as the venue can be effectively fished during the daylight hours. Another tip is that introduction of large amounts of feed is not usually required, with successful methods including the use of small PVA bags or swim feeder fishing, as well as ledger pellets, meat, paste or boilies, or more traditional methods using maggots, hemp, casters and sweet corn, introduced sparingly which account for numerous captures throughout the season. Float fishing is also a favoured method where the river allows, either by means of trotting or laying on. 
The flow of the river and dynamic of the fishing changes from season to season with the introduction of structure into the water, which diverts the flow and in turn slowly deposits silt and creates new bits of bank while at the same time scouring out deeper, more fast-flowing gravel runs. These silty banks can be extremely soft, so again, care must be taken whilst negotiating them. Proceeding up the path, you'll come to a reed fringe swim on a bend with a good deal of structure to the right which offers sanctuary to the fish. You'll quite often pick up chub in these types of areas, and they also provide excellent cover for the predatory species such as perch and pike. In this swim, as with most along the stretch, you find a good depth of water close in, with the flow coming in quite fast from a bush to the immediate left. A bait placed close in to the right around this area has been productive in the past, as has a bait slightly out to the left in the main flow. Introduction of bait will draw the fish upstream from their sanctuary, and is preferable to fish in for them in amongst this structure. Coming on up to the left, you'll come to a grassy open swim with a nice slap to the right which can produce well and gives good access to the main flow where the river narrows and creates a good interception point. Moving along, you'll see several grassy swims along a straight stretch, some of which are quite steep, so please take care whilst walking and fishing, especially during the colder months, where it's maybe a good idea to fish with a friend in case the worst happens. You'll then come to a wide open swim with a large ash tree opposite, which is a noted fish holding swim and has produced specimen sized fish of many species in the past, with a large amount of structure to the left, which causes the flow to speed up close in. There's lots of options for fishing in this one, both close in and further out in the swim, with a large area of open water in which to play and land fish. Moving on, you'll pass a good deal of structure with another swim where the river narrows slightly. And as with many river sections, conditions will dictate where the most likely fish holding areas will be at different times of the year. These types of areas require a locked up approach to fishing and members must be on their rods at all times as many bites, when targeting the barbel, come in the form of rat rounds which of course adds to the excitement of fishing in the venue. Barbell in this stretch over both fast and slow moving water, and experience will dictate where best to place a bait. As you move upstream, you'll come to the final section of this river with several slightly wider sections which feature very shallow water opposite, which deepens off pretty quickly into the main flow. As with most of Farnham Angling Society's river sections, this stretch of the river Lodden offers quiet, unspoilt fishing for those that are willing to put in the effort. It's by no means a novice water and you won't get a bite of chuck, but all the fish you'll catch are of good stamp and are in mint condition. For those who don't have a great deal of time to fish, this venue offers great opportunities to get a bite while many of the still water fisheries remain unproductive in the depths of the winter. The river comes into its own during the winter months and being set amongst open countryside, anglers are able to observe many wild birds and other wildlife which makes fishing the Cartshill stretch all the more enjoyable.